I'm sick of people talking about tolerance in this country. I keep hearing about tolerance. It's 2014, we should be at acceptance and love. What's this tolerance business? What do you tolerate, back pain? <laughs> I've been tolerating back pain and the gay Latino at work. <laughs> it's a very low bar for humanity, you know what I mean? And I'm not the first person who said this, right? One of the great philosophers of our time has said a very similar thing. I'm of course talking about the actor Matthew McConaughey. Right? Matthew. <laughs> The Oscar-winning actor, Matthew McConaughey, because the Oscars don't mean anything. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey said a similar statement when doing press before his film Magic Mike. He said that in the gay magazine, The Advocate. The Advocate interview does not say what Matthew McConaughey was wearing. I think we can all assume he wasn't wearing a shirt. <laughs> the first question they ask Matthew McConaughey is what does the support of the gay community mean to you? And Matthew McConaughey says, it's much appreciated. You know, I have some good friends of my own who happen to be gay, and when it comes to gay, straight, or whatever, I'm for anything life affirmative. No idea what the fuck that means. <laughs> Clearly some Austin Bongo philosophy. Right? It's, not, it's not a real point of view you can have. I'm for gay power, straight power, male power, female power. He stopped before white power, which is good. <laughs> But there's a semicolon here, maybe he thought about it first. <laughs> Everybody should feel empowered without oppressing anyone who's different. You know those World Cup banners about tolerance? I always thought that was one short. No, don't just tolerate me, understand and accept me. That's a beautiful thing that his PR person wrote for him. <laughs> and I say that because the rest of the interview goes terribly awry. <laughs> so the next question of interest is, what was your first exposure to gay people? Which is a terrible question to begin with. Like, exposure? Like gay people are radiation or some shit? <laughs> when were you first exposed to this gaydiation? <laughs> yeah? I'm reading about it in the news, scary stuff. NPR did a story, scary. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey says, in high school I was a jock popular, good-looking, in student council, had a girlfriend. I was that guy. Why the fuck are you telling us this? <laughs> You're clearly that guy because you just said that thing. That's what that guy says, he says that thing. And then he starts talking about a friend he had in high school who he refers to as a gay gothic chick, right? But I also had a friend who was a gay gothic chick. <laughs> So she was outcast because she was gay and because she was goth with the tattoos and the piercings. With the tattoos and the piercings! How fucking old are you, 800? <laughs> with the tattoos and the piercings that these kids have. Why the definite article there? I don't understand. But she was also really fucking cool and smart. I would always invite her out with my group, but it was hard for her to come out on her own, so mostly we would hang out separately. So I crossed the tracks back and forth with her. What fucking tracks are you talking about? <laughs> well, I was in Cool Kid Town, so I'd take the shuttle bus to Gay Freakville, and I'd hang out with this gay freak, and I'd mention it in an interview 20 years later because it was useful at the time. It's useful. And then the advocate says, that's refreshing. This is clearly gold and they have to keep digging. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's refreshing because it sounds like you were a stereotype of someone that outcasts have to watch out for in high school. And Matthew McConaughey says, right? <laughs> Which of course is short for, all right, all right. <laughs> I pandered there a little bit. And then he talks about something that happened to him at the University of Texas, Austin. I also had an experience in college when I befriended a kid who was from India. He was a bit of an outcast, but we were in a film class together. One night after he'd had a few drinks, he made a half pass at me. I went like, whoa, 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 and he freaked out. I think he thought I was gonna be violent or something. I stopped him and said, hang on, I'm not gay, but I like you as a friend. I'm sorry if you misread my friendship, but I still wanna be your friend. He was crying. And I remember giving him a hug and saying, dude, it's fine. Whatever raises your skirt, man. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure he stopped crying when you said that. <laughs> this is in The Advocate. 
He asked me not to tell anybody, and I said, you got it. And I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> You all realize he's just out of his friend, right? <laughs> like, keep in mind, this is like Texas in the 80s. There's like one Indian exchange student. <laughs> so everybody who's reading this is like, oh my God, Prakash? <laughs> I never knew. <laughs> and the thing is, Prakash might not even be gay, right? Like, you have to keep him mind that, you know, India can have some different cultural norms. So, like, you know, men in India in public can hold hands and hug, and that's not considered strange at all. So, you know, Prakash is hanging out with Matthew McConaughey, goes in for a hug, and Matthew McConaughey is the one that freaks out. He's all like, whoa, 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 what are you, gay? So Prakash starts crying, because he doesn't know what to do, right? And then, <laughs> next thing you know, he's in The Advocate. And Prakash might be married, right? He might be married to a woman, right? And his wife might be reading this and being like, Prakash? Did you try to fuck Matthew McConaughey? And Prakash is all like, no, no, I just went in for a hug and he freaked out. Really, Prakash, really? Were you naked at the time of this hug? No, of course I wasn't. I mean, he was, but he's Matthew McConaughey though. It was Wednesday. <laughs> All right, so at the end of the interview, Matthew McConaughey decides to share his idea for an after-school program to end bullying. Right. <laughs> you have every right to be cynical. <laughs> so here's his idea. So I want to go to high school athletic departments to offer this after-school athletics program, but the deal is each athlete has to recruit somebody who's not on the team, the nerd the gay kid, the fat girl, the kid with the hair lip to join the curriculum. I'm really excited about this idea. It's a fucking terrible idea. It's an awful idea. His idea is to get kids who are being bullied to play sports they probably don't want to play with kids who might be bullying them in some weird school mandated violence. If I was gay and Matthew McConaughey's friend, I'd be like, Matthew, Thank you so much for trying, but you're hurting us. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey's the Lenny of Mice and Men of the gay rights movement. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, new Seattle would be good for a Steinbeck joke. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs>